All right, well, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Grind, and I am actually geeked and stoked for my uh, conversation today. You know, as we've mentioned many times before, uh, we have real conversations with real people. And today in the grind seat, I have found somebody who's a real person, right? (laughs) But has achieved some great things. And so uh, we are interviewing a former professional athlete today that has uh, gone, uh, has had many challenges, many uh, things that he's overcome. But we're going to discuss that today on Behind the Grind because we know how this can apply to, uh, you know, our grind, whatever our grind may be, whatever our journey, whatever it is that we're on, understanding it from different places and kind of incorporating that into um, our lives and how we can overcome different things that we go through. So without further ado, Behind the Grind family, help me welcome Prince Daniels Jr. to Behind the Grind. Well, welcome to Behind the Grind. Oh, man, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. With all transparency, man, um, I just want to say thank you for your patience because, you know, I had dozed off right before the interview and then I woke uh-huh. up and I was like, oh, I got I got an appointment. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm grateful for your patience. So thank you. Man, I really appreciate you as well, you know. Uh, so forgive me for being a little over the top excited, but, you know, we're yeah. geeked today to have you in the grind seat and talking today. And so I uh, just want to chop it up with you today and just kind of yeah. discuss some things um, that is going on. But before we do that, you know, um, I kind of just introduced you as a former professional athlete. But can you just tell everybody the real uh, backstory and really who you are? You know, tell us. Uh, who Prince Daniels Jr. really is? Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience, first and foremost. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm father, husband, um, son, you know, um, yeah. uh, former player, former professional athlete. Uh, I went to Georgia Tech, I attended Georgia Tech, yeah. and um, was a walk on there. Um, I became a starter at Georgia Tech. And all academic, all conference. Um, ah. From there, um, went on and played in the NFL, played with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, had some incredible years with them, but my career was cut short due to injuries. Um, so um, now I'm a high performance mentor, a thought leader, and uh, um, I help high achievers and professional athletes um, unlock their peak performance. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so, you know, obviously I can't, you know, jump, you know, we're going to get into the peak performance in the, in the talk, but of course, since I have you in the grind seat today, I do want to talk a little football and, and a little bit about your experience. Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, that you played for Georgia Tech, and so, yeah. you know, I'm from, originally, I'm living in Atlanta now, but I'm from Michigan and Detroit, and so there's a guy that many of my listeners and my audience may know. Uh, we call him Megatron. If you could hey. tell us a little bit about your connection to Megatron. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Megatron, Calvin, CJ. Yes. Um, man, that's my brother, man. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, very fortunate to to uh, meet someone like that in, in, mm-hmm. in this lifetime, man, um, who is extraordinary and always possible, man. Just a really yeah. good guy up and down. Um hands down right and um um you know we we met in college and okay. he was yeah he was one of those individuals when like when you first see him he, he has a, a a very strong presence and um i remember you know everyone was talking about this kid that's coming to school like this is probably one of the best wide receivers you know coming to georgia tech i was like okay we got some good wide receivers <laughs> like who, who is this so guy? you were you're a little older than him i guess a few yeah few grades, huh? okay yeah yeah i'm two grades older than him and yeah um he came to school and i'll never forget the first time we saw him we were in um i think we we, we had morning workouts and we had um um we, we were doing some some skill drills right, right. so Right. Uh, morning workout. Then after that, we would line up and, you know, skills against, you know, the running backs against the linebackers, the DBs <laughs> against the, the wide receivers. Right. And, and um, I'll never forget, I'm standing back there and he jumped so high in the air. I was like, wow. Big, wow. <laughs> Wow, and so and he's already big, he's you know, already tall, big, right? <laughs> and so for for someone to to leap that high to go and get a ball, right? You know, I, like the first thing I did, me and my other teammate, his name is uh, Da Darius okay. Williams. 
Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Um, that's my dog, man. So wow. you know, me and DA, we was like, "What?" So we grabbed each other. We was like, and, and, and we ran straight to Calvin. We was like, "Look here, look here." Don't do that again, okay? You say that for the game, man. <laughs> you know that whatever you just did, don't do that again. Don't hurt right. yourself. You say that for the game, and so that was my very first introduction to Calvin, man. And, wow. And, and, and from there, um, you, you know, I, I would go and, and work out. You know, um, like me, I had this workout regimen: go, go to yeah. Conyers and work out at this this mountain bike trail, and it was okay. like three miles long, and I would just go over there and just just work out relentlessly. And one day he asked me, he was just like, yo, P, what's, you know, like, I, I heard that you, you know, go to this trail, man. Like, what's up? Can I, can I roll? I was like, yeah, come on. So, so you, you actually know, took him under your wing, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> most definitely, man. I mean, you know, that's, that's what you do when you can, right. when you recognize that somebody um, yeah. is thirsty to be great, right? Yeah. And so that's the same desire that I had. And so it was just right. easy. Um for us to connect and just, that's you know, good. just always, you want to be there for somebody that's like that, man. They just, just a really good person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he has a really great background um, and he comes from a really strong family. And, um, and so, you, you know, what you want to do when you, when, when you step in and you put some, you grab somebody and you pull them underneath your wings is be, be that support as well yeah. as if, as if you are their family. And so, yeah. Um, that's why I called my brother, man. I was in his wedding. Um, wow. Um, yeah, man. Um, he wrote the forward to my book. Uh, um, man, we, we've done some incredible. So we, we've written a book together, right? And, wow. Um, so, you, uh, so you guys yeah. still remain connected to this day, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, my, that's most definitely, awesome. man. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. All, all types of stuff, man. Just uh, yeah. all around great individual and lovely mm -hmm. family. Wife is amazing. Um, you know, like. Man, like we call each other brother and sister and you know what up bro and, and everything yeah. so yeah that's man. Good. so yeah well thank you for sharing that i mean that you know like i said being from michigan you know we're, we're a huge fan but also you know just connected uh you know in, in that aspect of understanding like you said greatness recognize greatness right and so you were able right. to uh, find that early, early on, and just see what uh, what that what 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 skill level he had, and the greatness and the work ethic behind it. So it doesn't sound like it was just talent. It sounds like yeah. there was some work that you you probably witnessed as well. Uh, with Most that being definitely. said, let, let's talk about you. You know, I was yeah. uh, you know doing my little research here, and I and I realized you, you know you were you know pretty pretty something special too there at uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah. Um, but but what was interesting is it sounds like you were a walk on. Yeah. T tell me about that. I mean, you're a walk on, and and to see what what you actually contributed to Georgia Tech, I think that's yeah. amazing. Can you tell me about that experience? Most definitely, man. So, um, um, I was I was highly recruited in in high school. Okay. Uh, okay. From another high school. Uh, you know, I got a lot of scholarship offers from um, Tulane, Stanford, Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue. Oh. Uh, and you turn hold on time out you turned down yeah. michigan state <laughs> <laughs> well uh, th th there's a there's a caveat to this right to this story so um that, that's uh, from all my michigan state uh buddies i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you know what Cal calvin's wife uh she went to michigan state man okay uh, so shout out so shout out to everybody at michigan state um but yeah i definitely turned on michigan state i didn't know okay no I, I didn't turn it down um um so they offered me a scholarship, but I didn't do well on the, uh, the standardized test, the ACT, oh, okay. SAT. So okay. I, didn't, I didn't pass it. So um, a little secret, you know, during that time, um, uh, you can get someone to take your, 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 your standardized test. So, <laughs> you know, um, growing up with an African dad uh, and, uh, and, and, and being known, you know, for like one of the top running backs in Houston at the time. Okay. Okay. I, I couldn't conceal my identity and get someone else to take my test for me. Couldn't do so, it. I could not <laughs> do it, man. So, um, um, I, I, you know, I took my test myself. Uh, okay. One, um, and standardized test for me was just wasn't a thing. You know, I, I'm 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 one of those guys. Um, you know, I study something, okay, uh, test time sure. comes, I regurgitate all the information, and, and, you know, I get great grades, and I'm good to go, sure. right? Sure, sure. Um, so, um, since I didn't do well in the SAT, ACT, or, or meet the requirements, okay. should I say. Okay, um, okay. Um, the, my scholarship offers were, 
or taken away. Um, and and so when the signing day came, um, I didn't sign with anybody. And so, mm. yeah, right. Um, so interesting. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I didn't yeah. have a plan at all. Because um, I'm assuming football is a big part. Is book football a big part of your life at this point or no? Yeah, yeah, okay. it is because now okay. you you know I'm I'm like I'm, I've received all these letters, received all these offers, and it's just right. like you know I'm like I'm about to be I'm about to be the man, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and and you know my family was just talking about how uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna end up going to the NFL because uh, um, you you can tell you can tell the athletes that that, that are going to make it. You know, right. Um, just right. from how they carry themselves, um, right. the work ethic that they have, and the commitment, the discipline that they have. Right. So I, I had all those characteristics. Um, okay. But I didn't think a, a standardized test was going to stop me. Right. And so, right. <laughs> um, luckily for me, I was out at track practice uh, at school, and for the first year, um, uh, the, the the recruiting coach from Georgia Tech he came to recruit another de- uh, mm. an, another player from my school so my head coach he was just like hey check this guy out right um, interesting yeah this guy he is a um, um man he's a diamond in the rough man he was like he just fell underneath the radar he's like but top one of the top running backs he doesn't sign with anybody he's like wow. just give him a chance man i guarantee right. you you won't uh you, you won't regret it so the coach is just like okay well let me see some film on the guy and he showed uh-huh. he showed him he showed him a uh, um it was one film clip he showed him, and it, it was me. I jumped over my fullback because he had <laughs> he had threw a nice little block for me, and then yeah. I ran somebody over, and then I I, I ran an eighty yard touchdown. He was just like, "All right, wow. let me go and meet the kid." <laughs> it's enough, right? He saw enough. <laughs> <laughs> he saw enough. He's like, "Let me go and meet the kid." So when he came came yeah. to meet me, we was at track practice, and I was I was doing handstands um, from, the <laughs> from like the push up position or like the wow. crow position, okay. and um, and so he just came, just like, "Hey." My name is Lance, Lance, man, what was Lance, uh, Lance Thompson, like okay. Lance, Lance Thompson, man, I, uh, you know, from Georgia Tech, uh, you know, um, your, your coach spoke highly about you, I just saw that 80 yard run where you ran somebody over, jumped over somebody, <laughs> like, like, you know, like, tell me a little bit about yourself, like, how in the hell you do that handstand, you know, like, I, I don't know, and I just so, did it, right? um, I just did it, right, and so we, we talked, and, and from there, uh, one thing led to another. He was just like, "Hey, I want you. Well, I want you to come out to Georgia Tech and okay. you know, come and come come to see if there's some a place that you like." And so, this is my second college visit because, in my head, mm. I had all these scholarship offers, right? Right. I, I was trying to be like the studious uh, yeah. guy and be like, <laughs> "I'll wait and I'll take all my visits," you know, at a certain time. Um, and man, so. You know, I really didn't get that. I really didn't get that many, um, that there many opportunities to go to a school and figure out, you know, oh, okay. why they have this, they have this. This is what they're offering me. What, right. like, right. you know? So um, once, because I, I did go, I did visit another school, and that was North Texas. They, okay. They they tried to offer me a, a partial scholarship, um, um, but I didn't want to stay in uh, in Texas. Right. It's, and, and, and what what is what is North Texas? Are they division? Are they a uh, certain? I, yeah, I believe they're division one. I, I know okay. they they they're in the same conferences. Uh, same conference with Tulane. Oh, okay, uh, okay, uh, Tulane. Okay. And okay. Um, um, so, but it was and it's in Denton, Texas. And, okay. <laughs> um, I, I I love Texas, but I just didn't yeah. want to stay there. I wanted to grow. I sure. wanted to go somewhere else. Sure. So um, I went to Georgia Tech. Uh, yeah, and um, on an unofficial visit, I um, had a chance to speak to the coaches, and they yep. were just saying, "Well, you know, you meet the requirement, but um, you have to get into school." Mm. And so, um, you know, so I, I went in and started started trying to apply for school. Yeah, and they were like, "You got to write an essay," you know, I'm like write an essay to get to a second to school, you know. So this was never on my mind, right, right. to write an essay, um, right. but I did it anyway. And okay. I got accepted. I got accepted into Georgia Tech. So, awesome. yeah, from there, um, I, 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 I was a walk on. You know, I joined the football team. Right. Uh, and just trying to figure out, you know, figure figure my way out. You know, a small fish in a big pond. And yeah. And so, um, uh, the agreement was I do well on and off the field, and 
I'll eventually get a scholarship. But it didn't happen like that. You know, it wasn't that pretty. Mm. And, okay. And, yeah. And so, um, I, see, I, now hold on. You you giving us the real cut, and this is good, you know, because sometimes <laughs> you know we just we just think it all just falls in place a certain kind of way. But you, it right. sounds like you're getting a bunch of little rejections here and there, but you you keep fighting through it. Is that is that what I'm getting? Most yeah, yeah most definitely. I, I would say it was a little, little bit of both, depending on what angle you look at it, right? Uh, okay. A lot of things did fall into place for me. Um, okay. That's one thing I will say. Uh, I had definitely had a lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, serendipitous um, yeah. uh, moments, uh, yeah. you know, in my life, and just staying spiritually connected. Uh, yeah. And so, but there, there was um, some resistance. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if there's no resistance, there's no no gain, right? And okay. so, uh, and so for me, uh, you know, do good on and off the field. Uh, my, we had a, a, a transition in, in in the coaches, you know, changing coaches and the head coach mm-hmm. and. And so uh, when a new head coach came in, you know, I had to try to prove myself over again. All over again. Wow. All over again, <laughs> man. Wow. And so, you know, now I'm like, all right, um, is this something that I want, right? Uh, well, I, I didn't I didn't come this far to give up now. So um, it, was a, it was a moment when I was at Georgia Tech and my, uh, the coach there, um, mm-hmm. not the head coach, but the offensive coordinator at the time, he okay. basically told me that I sucked and that I wouldn't amount to anything and that, uh, yeah, and that. Uh, oh, really? My chan- yeah, my chances so, of playing it. Go ahead. So you're hearing this actually from a, a Georgia Tech coach. Is, is that what I'm getting at? This is not just somebody who. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah, so they have coach. authority. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, my goodness. So he basically told me that, uh, you know, I suck and, um, you know, my chances wow. of playing at Georgia Tech are one in a million and. Um, my chances of playing in the NFL are one in a billion. So, oh, wow. uh, you know, um, he said, I can call some of my buddies up from my alma mater and see if you can get there because I heard that you're pretty smart. But, uh, well, no, he said, because I know that you're pretty smart, but, you know, uh, you know, but you won't have a chance playing at Georgia Tech. And so um, at that, you know, he, he, he gave me the push, right? Uh so if didn't. you don't mind me stopping you, what's going through your mind at this time? Like when, when someone, you know, someone tells you that, I mean, what, what's going to, and I know this is a younger version of you, but what's, what's going right. through your mind at this time? Um, at this time, you, you know, it, it shocked me. And so yeah. at, the, at that moment, this was the first time where I really hated someone. Yeah. And I was just like, man, like, this is what it feels like when you want to harm someone or, yeah. you know, uh, be, be the, be the cause of their demise. Right. right. <laughs> and so, um, 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 I wanted to get my literal spree world on, um, <laughs> right. but it, <laughs> it, it, you, you know, it seemed like there was a guardian angel right there. Yeah. That um, stopped, stopped that me. from happening. Yeah. And so, um, and then another thing when I, when he told me that, you know, he was, he was definitely trying to. Uh, berate me and yeah. and uh, you know made me feel uh, made me feel little minimized yeah right? yeah and so um, just from some of his antics and some of the things that he did and sure. uh, you know I just remember reminding myself like do not cry do not show any type of emotional okay. I mean emotions in front of this right. person right and so I held back my tears and okay. um, you know. The, the beautiful thing was uh, my, my father is um, African. He, he, you know, from Ghana, Africa. Yeah. So, you know, he yeah. showed me what is what it was like to be a man. And so okay. I'm, I'm extremely fortunate and thankful for that because yeah. that yeah. prepared me for that moment, right? Because yeah. um, if I didn't have any type of emotional uh, intelligence or yeah. some type of, res- um, you know, resistance, then yeah. I definitely would have been up you know, on top of them, punching them and right. choking them. And, so and, that, and that father else. reinforcement uh, definitely was it was vital, viable to you in yeah, th- this process. Definitely. That's good. That's good. Yeah, in so many ways possible, man. And so just yeah. having a strong father figure, uh, yeah. a male figure, a strong father, yeah. you know, in my life. Um, and plus I had um, four uncles as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> on my, yeah, on my mom's side. So I had a lot of strong men in my family. Yeah, so keeping um, you in line, there, yeah. Right? So I had to make my mind up. <laughs> Um, you know, if I was going to allow for somebody to take my dream away from me or, okay. um, um, or if, if I was going to make a difference and I decided yep. to make a difference. So I just made it up in my mind that, no, this is it. No, you, 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 you ain't going to never talk to me like that. 
Like, do you not, you don't know who I am. My name is <laughs> Prince Ahaji Daniels Jr. And today I will, <laughs> and, and, to, and today I, I, I will make my mind up to, to, to defeat you, you know? So, uh, from that point on, I, just, yeah. I will not be stopping. Um, yeah. and, and that was the mentality, you know, I just, I, I just would not be stopping. So every morning, um, for workouts, um, yeah. I would run to workouts in the morning time, and my teammates would pass by in their car, and their car would be full. And they'd be like, okay. "Yo, get in the car!" And I'd be like, like, "No, man. Somebody told me that I suck." I was like, "I see y'all at workouts," <laughs> you know. And wow. so, yeah, I just embodied that, and then from that point on, just never stopped. And it yeah. seemed like everything else opened up, like the universe. We, you know, once you do your part, mm. the universe opens doors for you. Mm, okay. And so, you know, when you ask, uh, you know, you will receive, but you have right. to walk in it as if it has already happened. As, you yeah. know. And so um, the doors start opening up. I was number seven on the depth chart. Went from number seven to number three to number one. <laughs> and, you know, you know. <laughs> and so but it was, it, was a, it was definitely a process. But, man, um um, I had a lot of support uh, from my yeah. teammates, you know, my family, from uh, from God, from the universe, man. It was just, and, and it happened the way that it was supposed to happen. Man, that's good to hear, man. You know, I love hearing these type of stories because it, it, it just it, it just shows, you know, you could take that, you know, you you mentioned the, the Latrell Sprewell moment. We could take those moments and, and, and do something destructive or we could take those moments and, and feel turn it inward on ourselves and all that kind of stuff. But you took that and used it as fuel, actually, yeah. and it looks like it propelled you. And the next step, obviously, you know, I, I was looking at some of your stats. I mean, you, you, you made some, some great stats with rushing yards. You made some great stats in your college career in those, in those places. Did some great things in, in bowl games. And then you actually uh, achieved your goal, uh, sounds like, to make it to the NFL. Now, um, I, I think I read somewhere prior to that, uh, uh, your mom uh, you know, there was a story about you telling your mom you were going to make it to the NFL or something of that nature. Can you can you share a little bit about that? How that went down? Yeah, I remember we we were in um, we were in, at the house, um, and I was watching a game. Um, this is when after I moved from Mississippi to Houston, as we okay. moved from Mississippi to Houston, and okay. we were watching a game, uh, uh, the or the Oilers versus the Lions. All right. Man, and so, you call it on them lions again. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and um, and it was Barry Sanders on TV, and Barry Man. Sanders he, he made somebody miss juke juke juke, and then <laughs> scored a touchdown. And I remember after he scored wow. a touchdown, like it was something that came over me at that moment, and 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 my eyes welled up with tears. Yeah, and, and I never forget they were kicking a field goal, mm -hmm. and I remember looking at my mom. And I was like, Mom, I'm going to play in the NFL. Wow. Now, how old were you about this time, do you think? Around like 10 or 11. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just, the, the, the desire was so strong. Yeah. You know, like, I just knew that it, it, it was supposed to happen. Right. right. I just felt it at that moment in time. And it was just like, like. Like I'm going to make the NFL, you know. Like that, like, just like, it, it, yeah. it is what it is. I'm going to make it, it right? <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. I'm going to make it. And I, just, I, I knew it, and um, and so yeah, I accomplished it. You know, like words yeah. are very powerful, and yeah, um, you, you know, so it wasn't like I held on to that moment. Sure. Right? I, like I remember that story, but sure. um, when when something when you make your mind up like that. Mm -hmm. Everything in your DNA switches up. Like your subconscious mm -hmm. mind is constantly working towards what you say that you want to do because mm -hmm. what made it real was my emotions. Mm -hmm. And so, which is energy and emotions. Mm, okay. All right. E, motion, energy, G emotion. Emotion. I like. So, you, you know, my there was always energy constantly in motion to get me to the NFL because that was something that I said that I was going to do at that age yeah. and yeah. it happened wow 
So, <laughs> you know, yeah, Barry Sanders, obviously, you know, I got to pull that out. I love, I grew up loving Barry Sanders and all that good stuff. So you, you actually, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I said, how can you not, man? How right? can you not? But you were in there in Texas. I don't know if you were in Texas at the time, but Emmitt Smith and, and all those guys, was he in that during that time frame, right? Yeah, 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 he yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. Emmitt Smith, <laughs> Troy Aikman, um, you know. But and still Michael Barry. Irvin, right? I mean, I mean, but like, like look at Barry, right? Yeah. He was, he yeah. was doing some incredible things. You know, Emmitt Smith, he was he was nice, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But he, he had a line to run behind. Right. And, uh, but what Barry said, he, he, he just – he he created things. He made it happen. Yeah. He was like 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 the closest thing to him right now is Lamar Jackson, right? Yeah. He just yeah. he just you know, like he did that. <laughs> <laughs> like like yeah. they, these he, these players, yeah, he making everyone look slow, right? Yeah. And so um, it's almost like super. It's almost like they're super hum, human out there on the field. You know, I, I've right. seen times where he he would get it looked like he's way back and he's about to get tackled, and then some kind of way he'll spin out of it. <laughs> Just run around it. I mean, you haven't seen much like that since, especially from the running back position. But right, yeah, he's exactly. definitely was a big fan growing up watching Barry Sanders. So right, yeah, man, right. I I love you know I love talking about this uh, football and and the excitement and, and just listening to you and you know listening to your story. And I grew up in in Flint, where uh, at the time a lot of guys played ball and stuff. And I and that story that you resonate with, you know, a lot of uh, guys that I grew up with. I saw them walk those type of things out and make it to the professional levels and and yeah. all of that kind of thing. So I know yeah. there's some that, that there's some truth to all of what you're saying. Now, with that being said, once you made it to the NFL, obviously you know you had the the you know the injuries and and so forth. You know, and I I know you've put a lot of stock into becoming a, a professional athlete and things coming up. You know, manifesting that and all that good stuff. But then yeah. the moment where it looks like uh, this is no longer the reality what's happening now like how does how does that work and how did how did you recover or bounce back from that if you don't mind me asking no not at all man <laughs> so when it happened it was like i was in disbelief i was just like yeah this is it no nah, this can't be it this can't be it yeah. so like um yeah. um i i i ended ended up um have uh, i would be injured I would get injured before the season start like right before the season start like I would end up getting injured um and before so, playing a game we were before playing injured. a game man. oh so, man um and and I, I like I was just getting into the groove I was catching my rhythm and, mm -hmm. and and everyone knew like everyone knew like this is the guy right here yeah you know like I just figured out you know like the game like I just yeah. started I became a student of the game and started coming yeah. to me extremely easy I saw. Yeah. I, I learned all the plays, everything. I increased yeah. my speed from a four five to a four two and a forty yard dash. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's one you gotta have um, um, uh, sheer desire and will, yeah. right? That's yeah. one. Okay. And then two, um, uh, I, I, I worked on. I, I worked on my core. I worked. Okay. I really worked on my core, and 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 that's that's what allowed for me to do that. Um, you know, and and um, I talk about it in my book. I talk okay. about it in my book, Mindfulness for the Ultimate Athlete. Um, yeah. That's the balance between power and peace. Um, yeah. And and how I just went, you know, I like I I in, uh, decreased that time back just like that, and it was just <laughs> something. Yeah, it was just something I kept doing, and I started feeling the difference. I was just like, wait a minute, hold on, what in the heat? Wow, <laughs> and so I could tell the difference, man. So yeah. you know, so all of these things started coming together, and I, I started gaining respect from it, from all from everyone uh, mm -hmm. there in in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I mean, from all the way from the top up, from the owner to you know everyone. It's just like, man, yeah. look at what you're doing, you know. So um, the only thing was I didn't get an opportunity to you know like display my skills, right? Right. And so um, um, my third year, I my my second and my third year, I got put on injury reserve. It's not like wow. now where you can get put on injury reserve and come back, right? Wow. And so okay. um, that that rule wasn't in just yet. But man, I I I end up getting injured my my third year, and on mm. paper it looks like I'm injury prone. Mm. But um, so it's like this mark against you. Yeah, yeah, it's like a mark mm -hmm. against me. Uh, yeah. Um, and so um, from there, um, 
you know, so so once I got hurt again, that that was pretty much it. And I and I remember, I'll never forget Matt Stover, uh, who, who was a, a, a kicker at the time. He, he, you know, he like for some odd reason he was in the locker room, and I was I just walked into the locker room. He's like, hey, let me let me let me talk to you. And, and I remember when he said that, like my, my you know my body got hot. I was like, what's going on? And so, uh, you know, he's just like, you know, how's your 401k? And he started asking me questions about that. I was like, it's good. I'm like, what you ask me these questions for, man? And he's like, you know, I've been here for a very long time, man. And I, you know, I know the guys and this and this and that. I was just like, why are we having this talk, man? Right now. <laughs> you know, right, right, right. Right now, right now. Like, uh, yeah. so, um, you know, he broke it down for me. It just, I, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to hear it or um, yeah. want to believe anything. And so, right. anyway, uh, one thing led to another. Um, the Ravens end up going in a different direction, sure. and you know I was just kind of like in disbelief, you know, hoping yeah. that I I would, I would um, you know play again, and right. then so I just kind of like just kind of um, um, uh, you know kind of soaked in my mis- in my misery, right? Uh, and and finally um, I got a workout to go and work out with the Buffalo Bills, but um, I didn't I, I I wasn't really working out, I, you know. So when I got there. It was just so many things that was working against me, and okay. so um, after that, that was it. And then I, after that, that's when I really started going, putting in a lot of work. But I never got, mm-hmm. I never received the phone call, mm-hmm. right? So it was just like I was too, it was too late mm-hmm. because one, once I got fired, I didn't know, like that's it. They just fired me. That's it. I'm, I'm done. That's how that like, works. Yeah. Right, right. And so I, I, I never really understood how the business worked. Um, right. It was just me just trying to get myself together and trying to figure out. You know what's my next move so after that man um nobody called me so i had a self-identity crisis which led mm-hmm. to a depression which led yeah. to suicidal ideation and then suicide attempt um mm-hmm. but you know uh, for me i was very very fortunate to um to to go spend time at a monastery man okay. and so um yeah I, I went to a monastery monastery and spent time there and, uh, now how long after your career did you go to the monastery um so it was like a year after. Um, oh, okay. Like, okay. Yeah, one year after. Okay. One year after, um, <clears throat> after, uh, after I was cut too. So I had been going to the. I, I went to the monastery uh, my second year. So that was like 2008. Okay. I went to the monastery my second year in the NFL because I was just like, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm ready to take my game to a whole nother level. <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah. Like, you know, I was yeah. just like, I seen all these Bruce Lee movies, I seen all these kung fu movies. <laughs> like, what's up, yeah. baby? Y'all, 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 I'm on another level, right? And yeah. and um, and so uh, so when when I got injured my third year, I was just like, what? I don't know what's going on. Like this this mm-hmm. is not how it's supposed to pan out, right? Okay. Um, um, but uh, y- y- you know, I was I was trying to do too much. Okay. I was trying to do too much. I was like, I, I, I still had a chip on my shoulder, but yet I was learning about, you know, mindfulness and being calm and, and you mm-hmm. know, but I still had that chip on my shoulder. Like, I'm, I'm about to show these fools. And I was doing yeah. it. I was showing yeah. up and I was showing up, but yeah. I was, I was doing a little too much that, um, well, I ended up, I ended up injuring myself. Do you think it's because of the culture of football? Is it that that just kept driving you back into, you know, trying to do too much? Or is it, you know what I mean? Is it, you know, being around most, those kind of guys and, you know, beast mode all the time, you know? <laughs> most, yeah, most definitely, man. You know, yeah. and, um, you know, for me, I needed a mentor. I needed someone mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, like tell me when to gear it down. Yeah. Right. Um, um, and, uh I, I didn't have that. It, my, my 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 mentality was like, go hard or uh, don't go yeah. at all. Right? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. but but you have to gear it down. You know, there yeah. should there has to be a balance, and so I, that's the I, key. I, I think that's the key. The balance is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But no, no, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you you have to have a balance, and you, you, you know you need somebody there to kind of uh, mm-hmm. that has been there to to mm-hmm. to help you. Uh, navigate your way through 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 everything, right? Okay. Um, so, um, you, you know that was the biggest thing for me, man. And since I didn't have that, it was just more like I had a chip on my shoulder. When yeah, the, 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 it was good to have the chip on my shoulder the first two years, but the third year, I, I needed to let that chip go and just play. Okay. 
Okay. Right. Yeah. But it was yep. just, you know, I need to prove it. I had I to, prove to prove something. <laughs> right, right, right. And 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 in my midst of proving something, I end up injuring myself. Mm. Um, and so, um, you know, because like the Ravens, I mean, they, they was just like, this guy has superior speed. Yeah. You know, like I, I just like has I'm all the you, things I, we need and all everything. Of it. Yeah. I, like so, you know, because they start moving me to uh, different positions. They're moving to wide receiver. Wide receiver. Oh, and, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, my speed, I, I developed my speed. And then I worked yeah. on my hands. Yeah. So, cause, and so I was playing three different positions. So, <laughs> you know, I was a utility guy. Uh, yeah. I was just able to, do, I was able to do a lot of things. The only thing, you know, I wasn't, you know, like, I can, I could probably throw, you know, football or something, you know, they sure. do like a, a halfback pass. <laughs> um, um, but, but for the most part, man, I was, I was doing it all, you know, yeah. and I was having a good time doing it um and especially uh, especially there being with all of those great players mark clayton Derek mason yeah. um yeah and, i mean you know todd heap um yeah. uh, wow. Daniel wilcox <laughs> man I, I mean all those guys then the defense you know like air reed hello tonight the one landry ray lewis bart sky Lewis, Thomas, ah. <laughs> you know kelly greg double j uh samara Rowe, chris McAllister. so you know my mindset yeah. was always like i get an opportunity to go against the number one defense and right. The, That's why right. you fell. they were the number one defense during that time, right? Yeah. Number one wow. defense. And I'm just like, okay, so if I can go against the number one defense and make them look bad, I said, when I go against the number two, number three, number yeah. four, yeah. I'm gonna be one of the greatest <laughs> running backs in the league. I was just of like, course. it's a no brainer, right? You know? <laughs> of course. Um, right. And so and they definitely made made me sharp. They definitely, you know, helped me out. You know, I, I, another um, good good person that. Um, um, kind of took me underneath their wings was uh, Michael Anderson, a running back. Okay. Uh, okay. Mike Anderson, yeah, he would always talk to me. You know, uh, like he would, he would just always pull me to the side. You know, and just be like, <laughs> "Yo," he had this real raspy <laughs> voice, like, "Yo, what the hell was that?" <laughs> you know, I'm just like, "What you mean?" It's like, "What what the hell did you just do?" <laughs> you know, I was just like, "Man, you know, I just kind of do it when I get mad." He was just like, "That's that shit that they looking for upstairs." <laughs> <laughs> he's like I only seen two people do that in my lifetime he said I seen right. Clinton Ports do that and LaDamian Thomas and he's like you wow. just did it he's like wow. you just you just showed me what you could do <laughs> he's like you need, you need to continue to keep doing that young Brooke uh, you know and I was just like I was like alright he's like no I'm yeah. serious he's like I'm gonna tell you this one time <laughs> and one time only and then after that he let me go and he went back to the corner and started eating the sunflower seeds <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, that, man, that's that's got to be awesome, man. When you know, again, to be around all of that, just what you described, I forgot. You know, the Ravens yeah. were just they were that dog when it came to defense. So you, I mean, yeah. you were around all of that, okay. and, and was groomed behind that. So, um, yeah. so and I, and I got an opportunity to play with my cousin Stephen McNair, man. So that's your, like, that was your cousin. Yeah, man. So <laughs> oh, you, you know, like that, that was amazing. You know, uh, wow. from Mississippi. I told you, from, yeah. From the sip, baby. From the wow. from the mud, baby, you know, and so wow. um, yeah, and it was it was funny because Steve had came to my high school, um, mm. uh, in in Houston. He came okay. and he stopped by. He came and spoke to us, and I was like, "I'm your cousin. I'm your cousin." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, "I'm from Mount Olive. I am from Mount Olive." <laughs> you know, and he was just like, "That's what's up, baby." I was like, "I'm gonna play with you one day," you know, and and it happened. Man, I played with and my cousin in the NFL. It happened. It actually, actually happened, happened. man. So, you know, like, words are very powerful, and, and the emotion yeah. behind the words, you know, uh, turn to action, and you yeah. know, all this stuff happens, man. So, you know, like, for my advice to kids, it's like, when you feel it, like, just go with the flow and, and yeah. believe it. And believe that it's going to yeah. happen, and it's, it, it will. Man, so now, uh, you know, I, I, I'm reading that you are now helping, at, uh, now you're helping athletes now, um, yeah. uh, those former athletes, it sounds like, you're helping them beyond the game. Yeah, Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. What, the, what does that look like? And who are you, who are you typically uh, helping during this time? Yeah, so, um, so I have a company called Game Beyond the Game, where okay. we help um, professional athletes or elite athletes. Um, okay. Um, um, discover their purpose. Uh, okay, and their so these are current athletes, athletes that are playing it, or so. Or? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So these are current athletes that are playing, and okay. then former athletes as well. So, okay. 
like I created an ecosystem where okay. I work with the player um, before the game, during the game, and after the game. Got so it. then, then that way that transition is easy, That's right? Good. And so yeah, so they can so there's no lag in in um, in the transition process and them trying to figure right. out you know what they're going to do. Uh, right. And so um, created this ecosystem so they can find their purpose and right. and have the vision and then develop the mindset to see it through. So um, yeah, um, so you know I've been very fortunate in doing that and I do uh, mentorship, um, okay. high performance mentor. Um, okay. I don't call myself a coach, but you, you want to oh, okay. call it a coach, you know, that, okay. that's what it is. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so, I, and I work with high achievers, you know, like one percenters of the world, um, okay. and, and helping them unlock their peak performance because there's something, uh, something that's inside of us. And I was able to discover that while I was at the monastery, yeah. um, like there's so much more. And the reason why, you know, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, um, you're not able to tap into your full potential. Mm -hmm. uh, but w when I was at the monastery, uh, I was able to really dial in and see what that was. And okay. one of the reasons why being out in the mountains, uh, with other monks and, and, and really meditating, you know, like yeah. really, really, really going at it, in, huh? <laughs> yeah, really going at it, put it, put it into work, meditating for one hour, you know, three right. times a day, um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you get a chance to see so many things that you've been ne ne neglected um, yeah. from or deprived of, right? And and one is just uh, silence, you know, peace of mm. mind. Like no no cars blaring, no horns blaring, uh, no sirens, you know, no, no mm. news. So it, you're it, away it, from it all. Away from it, it all. Like, wow. Right, yeah, man. And so when, when your muscle, your mind muscle, your brain, uh, starts to like that becomes a norm for you man that, I mean like you start really tapping into something that's that's far beyond um, uh, you know what you've uh, been able to see uh, right you know uh, right now so that's why I have a level of calmness where it's just like I've I've, I've, <laughs> I've experienced I've been exposed to that calmness and so I know okay. what it means to you know to to to, to be like that um, and I got away from answering your question, I believe. So uh, <laughs> my apologies on that, man. No, no, um, no, this is good. Okay. But actually, let's, let's dig into that. Obviously, you, you went to the monastery. You're a monk. You know, a lot of my listeners, we don't know nothing about that. What is that like, right? Like, how, how right. do you become... Let me be honest with you, if I could just be transparent. Please. You're a black man and a right. monk. You know, we don't always tie that together. So you you gonna have to help us out today. <laughs> right, right, right. And I'm and sure so, I'm sure it happens, but we don't see that. <laughs> you don't see it, right? Especially not from a, 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 a NFL player, right? So, right. Like, like, a sport that we that we glorify. And um and so it, it was funny, man, because like like a decade ago, man, when, when I when I switched over to this, you know, people uh -huh. was like, "You crazy, man! You tripping? <laughs> like, like what is it, Buddhism?" Okay, time out. Like, when you go back yeah. to Mississippi, I know they say you're tripping, and when you go back to, the <laughs> and like, what? If, hey, man, well, no, we, get we, it we, all the time, man. Like, like they, you know, they be hearing me like, you know, God first. It's only God, right? And I'm just like. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, what else you think I'm thinking about? You know, I grew up Christian, grew up in the Baptist church, man, right? And um, yeah, man, you know, but um, when I was little, um, um, growing up in the, in the Baptist church and, um, uh, and, and in the South, right? Okay, um, okay. When, when I would ask these questions like, you know, where dinosaurs at in the Bible? You know, they used to be like, boy, be quiet. <laughs> you know, you're too smart for your own good. You know, asking all these questions and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. or, or saying if you ask this question, you know, you're going to get struck down by lightning. Mm -hmm. And I, but, but then I would, you know, I, then I went to a Catholic school. Uh, private, oh, so you, know, Catholic <laughs> so you had the Catholic so, school behind Yeah, so, so, I, the, so I went to Sacred Heart uh, a Catholic okay. school. And, and, um, and, you know, I used to ask questions, you know, like, so curious, just curious. Yeah, like, huh? like, why is Jimmy? Why is Jimmy able to do that, but I'm not able to do that? Like, that don't make no sense, right? And so, like, you know, and I'm just like, 
you know, what, why isn't Jesus in these history books? And, mm -hmm. and you know, just like, just like, excuse me, you know, that's what they do in church, not here. And I'm just like, but mm -hmm. why? Like, this, you know, it never really made sense to me. Okay. And so, um, and so, you know, as I got older, um, when I started realizing it was just a lot of these words, mm -hmm. right? And so those words mm -hmm. were words that would not allow for you to grow beyond a certain point. It okay. will be kept in in your lim in, in your limitation and and okay. evolving mm -hmm. as a as a as a human being. But, okay. Um, and so you know, I just um, I, I felt that it was right for me to adopt spirituality okay. and understand about life um, okay. because um, as I mentioned, there, I was at my lowest of the low in mm -hmm. my life, and so um, I was in a dark space, sure. and I was looking for light. Yeah. And and you know from all of my, you know, watching these old movies, Bruce and Bruce Lee be like Walter, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and you know, it seemed like they had found the light, you know, somehow, some way, right? Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to tap into that. So, okay. um, you know, end up going to a monastery and spend the time there. I was real fortunate. I had family members that was a part of the monastery. So, Oh, okay. So you did have family that actually was a part of this as well. Yeah, yeah. Because, okay. I, I mean, so I have four uncles, right? And Okay. And um, everybody was just like spiritually endowed, like, you know, whether okay. it was uh, the, the, the Christianity background or okay. just wanting to evolve more. Right. Okay. The, like there's so much more out there. So, you sure. know, you're growing up in Mississippi, there's a lot of restrictions. Right. <laughs> so there's a lot of things. So you, you, like if, if you know anybody from Mississippi, you will know that they proud when they say they're from Mississippi and they made oh, yeah. it. Right. I've yeah. noticed that. Especially yeah, now exactly. I'm in the South, I've noticed the people, because I come across a lot of people from Mississippi, and they are proud, which, you know, and I've been there, and I understand it now, and I had the right. misconception, I'll be honest with you, I had a misconception about Mississippi, and that's like, you know, I've come to a lot of states in the South, and so I had this, this misconception about Mississippi, but Mississippi is not quite like I had it, it, it definitely is, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's some yeah. parts, but, you know, it's yeah. not, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's progressive in some parts, right? Yeah. It's progressive in some parts, but yeah, there are yeah. other parts that are still Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and so, uh, so you know, you, you better not go over there because if you do, you know, something <laughs> might bad, something bad might happen right, to you, boy. Right. So, um, it, it, you know, just growing up, I, 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 was, I, I started understanding the power of words. Words mm -hmm. are very, very. Uh, they can either stifle you or, you know, hinder you from growing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, um, you know, I, 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 as I got older, you know, I was asking these same questions and mm -hmm. no one can answer them for me. Mm -hmm. So just like, all right, well, I need to go and seek this myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, went to the monastery. First day I get there, you know, I'm just like in my head, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you're thinking like, wow, I'm about to receive all of this power now. And that right, did not right. happen on day one, you know. Okay, like, so it's not like but, the movies. No, nah, it's not like the movies, <laughs> not at all, man. Not like the movies at all. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be funny, but uh, no, I don't know if you please. saw that Martin episode back in the day when he went off. Well, he was at Najee Rumble, right? <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite Is it episodes, like that? Man. Is it like that or no? <laughs> yeah, no, and so, no, it wasn't like that. Um, um, but, that, that, you know, that was, that's real funny and real beautiful because somebody else said that to me. Just like, man, my okay. first, first time thinking of a mug is with Martin. You know, he had one of his head, side of his hair braided and the other side an afro. And he was talking to Pam. He was like, nah, he run by, right? So, yeah, so I, I, I laugh with people, but, yeah. but it, it's definitely not like that. Not sure. at all. It's sure. it's like like really strict um, okay. in, 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 in the way, uh, in the order. Um, okay. um, and, you know, um, silence, right? Um, uh, meditation, constant meditation, constantly mm -hmm. reading. Mm -hmm. educating yourself about who you are and, and is there and like some fasting going on or you eat a strict diet type yeah, of thing yeah okay. yeah fasting going on as well you know you're okay. cleansing the mind you're cleansing the body you're cleansing mm -hmm. the spirit right wow. and um and so you know if you if you've been been at been at mcdonald's for mm -hmm. years right and now you go mm -hmm. somewhere and, you, and you're not eating mcdonald's but you're eating food that's actually alive and mm -hmm. and 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 plants um, mm. it, it enlivens your body, your spirit, mm. your mind. And mm. so now, you know, if you are constantly listening to, 
you know, uh, music that's that's like condescending and berating and you know, mm. bitch hoe uh, or mm. or selling drugs, right? Like that so, no longer so the is a part of. That's not a part of this. The, the music and all that is not a part of. No, no, nothing. Okay. So you're, you're separated from everything that you've been conditioned. Wow. Um, wow. You know, too. So <laughs> yeah. you uncondition yourself by being in that environment by okay. you know cleansing your body, okay. um, putting all the proper you know, nutritional food in your body, right? Okay. Um, when it comes to your mind, there's no sound, so now you're stuck with your own thoughts. So there's nothing influencing your thoughts. And mm -hmm. so now you start reading books. So when you start reading books, it's like you're working out your mental muscle, your mind muscle. So it's like you're doing push-ups, you know, mm -hmm. with these, all of these books that you're reading. Then you start reading books about what, you know, things or, you know, the things that are possible in this world and in life. Okay. You know, Is I'm... It Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is it a certain time? So when I hear people saying, "Hey, they went off to a mon monastery," is it a certain time frame? Is it a, a set time, or you just go as long as you go, or how does that look? I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, you can go as long as you want to go. You oh, know, okay. Like, like, yeah. It's um, it, it's it's open. Um, okay. To all, uh, but only only to to them that hit a call. Okay. Right. It's open to all, but to but to the ones that hit a call. Um, mm -hmm. Meaning. Um, like it's open for you, but you know, if you go there and not open to it, mm -hmm. then, um, the, you're not going to have the, the experience that you, that, that you have in your head or the preconceived notion, you know, like Najee Rumpa, right? It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like that. So what happens, what happens is you make a, you make an appointment to be disappointed sure. and, 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 um, and so, uh, you know, like you, it's time to become a student. Like if you show up, then you're you're ready for the unknown, um, and and so you know once you thrust yourself into it, you know like like I I I, I love to be transparent with people because when I mm -hmm. first went there, I thought I was being brainwashed. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I thought I was just like I'm being effing brainwashed, like <laughs> I'm just losing it, just like what the, you know. But what I realized is just that I have been brainwashed this whole time. Um, okay. And in order for me, and, and I wouldn't say brainwashed, but I've been influenced by a lot of things that doesn't allow for you to have elevated thoughts. Oh, gotcha. Uh, okay. And, and and so what does that mean? So, you know, we, 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 when we grow up, we grow up influenced by the um, by what our parents, well, right. you know, our, learn. our environment, our culture, our our exactly. a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and so, you, you know, if, if we're not too far 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 removed from you know slavery and stuff right mm -hmm. and so um wh whatever your parents or your grandparents went through their perception is is shaped based upon what they went through their experience and what right. they had to endure right sure and so mm -hmm. and so when, when 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 they when you're growing up they nurture you based upon what they've endured Right. So if they had a bad encounter with the police, then right, it passes on. Yeah, it, it get passed on, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, what happens is when you go, so you're being conditioned that way. So when you go to the monastery, you're like, that's all you know. So right. now you're being unconditioned to 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 ah. relearn. You know, so you're taking like, all that away and stripping all that. Away. They're stripping, stripping all, all that away. Wow. And, and and now now you tap into your authentic self, what mm. what what the source, the creator has made you to be. Okay. And so you start living into it, and mm. and and when you start doing that, then you start really re recognizing like, man, there's so much more to this, and like racism and and you know the systemic racism runs very mm. deep deeper than people mm. can ever imagine and so you can never really break away from it because it's in the religion it's in the politics it's in Tied it's all over the things. world yeah. <laughs> and so and so once you start rising above <laughs> all of the mundane then you start realizing like this is it right here like why didn't nobody <laughs> tell me about this you know and and yeah. and so that's when i really started tapping into my 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 my, my powers you okay. know, and I and I really started understanding the, the the power of words, start understanding the power of silence, you know, and just being calm, um, mm -hmm. and 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 the things that we're capable of doing, but 
we don't know how capable uh, we are of doing certain things because we've never been taught that except the things that's been in, a, in you know, in our environment, like, mm -hmm. right? And and when you see somebody being successful, you're like, oh, that's it right there. But mm -hmm. actually, that's not it, you know, because it, people tend to, um, to 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 gain success, but they lose themselves. Um, mm -hmm. But they are yeah, they already been lost, right? That's deep, yeah. And and, and so um, and so when you start learning how to practice mindfulness and meditation, then you learn how to anchor yourself. And you remember who you are, even when the success comes. And when the success comes, it's ah, just like you're key. grateful for it, as yeah. opposed to like, yeah, I earned this. It's more like right. I'm grateful for all of this. I know that this can disappear in a minute, and if it does, yeah. I'll still be grateful, you know, because I have me. And and so, and so that's the so, experience. So it sounds like that ties into when you're when you're dealing with the athletes, which is probably powerful. It ties into that fact, you know. Obviously, they they're they're reaching success. They're doing all this stuff, but like yeah. as you say, like even as we discussed with your career, it's it's gone up. You know, it's gone. You know, you had these different moments here, but if right. like you said, if you're not able to get yourself in a, a proper place, you know what I mean. You you'll <laughs> you'll yeah, go you with the wind. Can't get yourself centered, man. Yeah, yeah you just kind of go yeah, with the so wind. Just go with the. I, sail. I see how that all ties together. I see how yeah. that works together. That's yeah. powerful. That's powerful. Yeah, man. So it just so, allows for me, yeah, to to be, you know, centered uh, yeah. at all times. So I imagine you weren't always like this, you know, as an athlete as well. So now that, you know, now <laughs> now that you're like this, if if you yeah. would go back in 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 into your days of playing sport, do you think it would have definitely enhanced what you were doing, or do you think you would have not even played football? Or I mean, what what do you think that would have happened? Would have happened. No, I, I I still had I still had the passion for football. Um, okay. You know, it's a gladiator sport, so it's been around for a very long time. So sure. that's in our <laughs> DNA, right? Um, so I still had the desire, but uh, just incorporating more and more meditation. Um, okay. What what? Yeah, it's something that I would definitely have done. Um, mm -hmm. I think, and I, I would still would have been on this path, mm -hmm. but I would have had a lot more emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. a lot more, um, a lot more. Uh, like level of maturity mm -hmm. because you know so even the adults um, you know you think you know, what's that respect your elders but a lot of yeah. times your elders are not 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 respectable right and so um, um, <laughs> and, and so you know just understanding who you are um, yeah. as a person you know your authentic self and, yeah. and that's something that that um, we don't learn about we don't learn that we are a person um, until yeah. later on in life, um, yeah. you know, but like when you learn that early on in life, then you learn how to treat yourself, right? Like the thing is we treat other people better than we treat ourselves. Uh, um, and it should be the other way around. Um, mm -hmm. because it's like, if you ask me for some money and I don't have any money, but I'm still trying to give you something of value, you know, uh, it's, it's like I lose myself and I yeah. lose my mind trying to give you something that you asked for. Um, and so, but if I have money and you ask me for money, I'm okay with giving you money and not losing myself. Right. right. And so, um, it's the same thing. Once you learn how to love yourself, then, um, there'll be, uh, once everyone learns how to love themselves, there'll be less, less divorces, there'll be less breakups, um, you know, l less killing because you start realizing like, man, I, I, I am a, I'm, I'm a person and I'm a part mm -hmm. of the, I'm a, yeah, I'm a part of the yeah, you're whole. You're on to something with that. You're on to something. When when yeah. we learn to value ourselves a lot more and love ourselves and, and so forth, yeah, we don't have to feel like, you know, especially in the case of if I give this to you, I lose something. You know, you don't feel like you lost something because you helped somebody, you do something for somebody, or whatever the case may be. You don't lose yourself. So Right, and man. you recognize that there's a level of abundance in the world. Right. Like a, that's yeah, key. It's, it's, like, it's like you have an apple tree. Yeah. Right, and it's more, but it's, as they say, it's, it's more out here for us to eat, right? We we, we don't have to feel like it's it's only right. one apple out here. It's more right, for us right. to eat. Like, like you got a thousand apples, but you get mad when you get one away. Like, right, you see somebody if they take that one apple, <laughs> though you sitting here with an apple, you like if they eat that apple, <laughs> I I'm might not have no more. <laughs> right, and see, but but see, that's that's where business comes in, right? Mm -hmm. that, that was that was the whole you know scarcity yeah. mindset when it comes to scarcity. business, and so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so man, it's it's a lot of things. Man, I can go deep. I've I've read yeah. so many books. 
Like I've read so many books, man, and so just well, I, I have, well, we I have we, we ain't gonna have you go too far, no further. I'm deep, not, than, I'm you not, know, I'm not gonna you go know, deep, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a guy from Detroit, you know, <laughs> church guy. No, so no. you know, there's yeah. only so far I could go. <laughs> like, no, like like like, I, but uh, you know, I, I appreciate you you going this far, man. Like I, I, I don't go deep unless unless. You know, like people, that, that's what they ask for. But for sure, part, sure, sure. I, I, I like, I love to keep it on the surface level, but I do like to just drop a little jewel so you can be like, what? I appreciate. What did he that. just yeah. say? Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, so. Um, and yeah. and I hope you appreciate this too. You know, the, just the curiosity. Oh, man, you know, um, the questions that we're asking. You know, because yeah. you know, I, man, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah, there's certain yeah. things that I don't know, and I, you know, and you being able to be open to share. Uh, yeah. definitely um, was powerful and um, you know it's a lot of respect I, I you know when you hear about a monk man you, you yeah. you're like man they, yeah. that takes a lot to do it takes right. a lot to do a lot to you right. know whatever um, but but you do see a pattern of, of individuals that, that, that walk down that path yeah that they, that they're able to provide so this is it's dope all around yeah. so um, thank you so much man <laughs> thank you yeah I, you know like I, I want to get rid of that stigma or, mm-hmm. or my, well, not, I don't want to. It's just it's a stigma. So I just lead by example, and sure. wh- wh- whomever is um, um, awakened or enlightened mm-hmm. by by the action, then, yeah. then then you know, come on. But other than that, like I'm I'm not trying to uh, yeah. get up on a on a on a, on a platform or yeah. be behind a podium and be like, hey, everyone, it's time <laughs> to meditate. You know, like you know, that's not that's not my style, man. It's just more so like like. Like I, I have courses, right? Helping you unlock yeah, your peak yeah, performance. And yeah. so um, um, I just tell people it's a tool that you're able to use to really tap into yeah. your power that you have inside of you so you know yeah. how to carry yourself um, yeah. whenever you get in a hostile situation. You know yeah. how to maintain calmness. You, you know how to yeah. navigate. You know how to yeah. listen to your intuition. You, 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 know, you, you, know, you know how to deal with, with people of authority, you know, mm-hmm. in, in, in a way where... Uh, it, it 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 baffles them. They don't know how to handle it, right? Right. So and and so when they don't know how to an- handle it, they try to get really aggressive. Mm-hmm. So you you know you when when they try to escalate things, you just mm, <laughs> just calm them right down. And, and and you know they're like huh, you know like like, like oh hold on, hold on hold on hold on <laughs> like this, this can't be real. You know like uh, this, you know and so it, it's just all, all of these things I've been able to. Um, experience and endure and overcome mm-hmm. them so you know like the power of this is is so phenomenal um like it it, it, it will help you know like a culture um mm-hmm. you know like go above and beyond and not feel that they are um, um, um enslaved you know mentally you know physically mm-hmm. and all of the above and so it, it's 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 a lot that goes into it, but I just want to share that you know just just letting people know that there's yeah. something you know there's a the spirit that's inside of you that allows for you to go above and beyond and yeah. um and you know be be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be possibly be and that God made you to be you know. Yeah. Yeah. Man, well, I I appreciate you again uh, sharing uh, what you shared with us today, and, and you know we just walking us down your story. Uh, it's just a it's a powerful story, actually. Uh, you know, and and I know so many people can relate. And in some case, you know, maybe it may not be a professional athlete scenario, but it could be a, a, you know a job that they've gone to, and and, and someone so told them that they couldn't uh, make it to the VP position or whatever you know whatever it may have been, and they had to overcome right. those things. There's so many things right. that we can relate to in your story. Right. Um, and then on the on the other end of that, as you talk about. Uh, being centered and mind mindfulness and all that kind of stuff. There's some things that uh, we can pull from that um, for, for being, you know, tying that into our daily journey of, of being success, you know, on this journey of being successful. So I really appreciate you uh, sharing today. It's definitely been a, a, a wonderful moment uh, yeah. to, to t- chop it up, you know, um, and hopefully yeah. uh, <laughs> some our yeah. listeners get something out of it. If not, I learned a well, lot. Well. I was in, uh, learned a lot from our conversation, yeah. just dialoguing. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, with, yeah. as we in, leave out, I don't know if, if, you know, you mentioned you have a book. You uh, mm-hmm. also, uh, I don't know if you're out there like that. I don't know if the monks are out there on social media like that, but if there's a way, <laughs> <laughs> are you able to be followed out there? Yeah. If there's a way to you know, connect with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so um, most people call me half, half monk, half human being. Okay. Because like, <laughs> like the, the thing about it is, 
you, you know, you, you see, you know, like, uh, so, like, I'm an athlete, right? So mm-hmm. you you know what to expect from an athlete, right? Right. And so once an athlete, well, our pre- always our, athlete. Pre- our our idea of what we think an athlete is, right? <laughs> exactly. So the same thing that comes with you know being a monk, once a month, mm-hmm. always a month. But mm-hmm. you expect for me to act a certain way mm-hmm. uh, because it's easier to categorize me and be like, oh, he's a monk. This is how he's going to act. Oh, mm-hmm. well, he's a human being. This is how he's going to act, right? Or mm-hmm. he's an athlete. This is how he's going to act. But mm-hmm. for me, I'm I'm just being me. I'm allowing yeah. my personality to be personal, yeah. and I, that's how I connect with other people. You know, I'm a spiritual being. You know, having a human experience, but I understand yeah. the way that we connect is through our spirit. You know, yeah. when, when it's it's a vibe, right? Mm-hmm. And, and when you feel that vibration and that frequency, you like. What's up? You know, like who is this? Oh, okay, I I, can, I rock with them. I roll with them. They man, they cool. You know, and and mm-hmm. that that's all vibration, and mm-hmm. and so um, you know, like 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 for me, I'm I'm just me, right? Yeah. I'm 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 approachable, um, you know, and so I can go extremely deep, or I can keep it shallow, right? Mm-hmm. And so because mm-hmm. you gotta you have to have a range where you can relate to people because mm-hmm. um, what what I'm doing, I'm not I'm not trying to become, I'm not trying to be a savior, but I'm just just letting you know. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you can reach this level, and and you know the only reason why you are not been been able to really reach it because you haven't been aware of the words yeah. that you've been saying or been around you. Like, if you say that you can't, or if you say that you can, either way, it's true. And yeah. when you say one of those things, the action is going to follow. When you say that you can't, the action follows. When you say that yeah. you can, the action follows. Yeah. Right. And so that, that that's what I remind you. Like, OK, if somebody tell me like, man, yeah, I was going to do something. But man, so and so happened. It's like, oh, OK. <laughs> and then, you know, and then, then, you know, explain it to me. And I'm just like, well, do you want my opinion? Because I'm not going to say anything unless you want me to. Right. right. And and, right. and then they're like, man, you know, but 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 what I'm, what I'm telling you is like, like. Words are powerful. And when you yeah. start really understanding that. Then you start really becoming mindful of the words that you say and then allowing your actions to follow that. And man, you can open up. But to be able to find me, you can go to my website. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and 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 see the things that I'm doing, you can go to my website, uh, yeah. at princedanielsjr.com. Awesome. Um and, and you can find all of my instant I mean my, my social media handles. I'm on Instagram at Prince A D J R. Um well I'm dancing. I love to dance. Okay. Um, you know, or and, and uh, I dance, I bust out of meditation as well. I, yeah. I do some meditation on my on, on there, you know. Um, but I'm 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 really here to uh, live out live out and fulfill my purpose, and that's to get everybody in the world to um, um, uh, practice meditation together, you know, just okay. collectively, um, and you know whether that's for one second, but um, just want to show people the power of the mind and and what we can do uh, together, you know, mm-hmm. and how we can make a difference in the world, and so. Uh, um, you know that that's 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 what I'm, I'm I'm out here doing, and I start with the athletes because they, everyone um, enjoys an athlete, and they're role models, yeah. and so they're yeah. influencers. Yeah. Um, and then you know go from there, and it trickles down. And so yeah. um, if we can all do something collectively at the same time, then it's like moving a mountain together, mm-hmm. right? And so mm-hmm. um, when we can sit down and we can close our eyes and focus on you know like world peace or mm-hmm. you know, something like that together, it'll happen. Um, right. And that that sets the standard for the next generation because the next generation always want to come back and outdo you know the previous generation. <laughs> of so course, they're like, well, if you can do one second, we can do five seconds. And <laughs> you, you know, for me, I'm like, well, well, do it, do the five <laughs> seconds because that's what yeah. this is about, right? Yeah. You know, it's about yeah. helping each other evolve and become the best yeah. version of the, of yourself. So, um, right. my book, Mindfulness for the Ultimate Athlete, is on Amazon.com. So please awesome. go and get your copy, and after you yes. read it, leave, leave a review on Amazon.com. Um, awesome. And so, yeah, just go to my website. You know, sign up for my my, my ebook. I got a free ebook as well. The, okay. Um, the the, uh, the five essential lessons on how to live a life of success. Um, um, and and then you can get updates on when my course is coming up. Um, but man, yeah, um, it, it's it's amazing because it's been like ten years in the in the, in the making. Um, yeah. A little over a decade. And, you know, for a long time, I, I, I've been, you know, hit with a lot of resistance because I'm black, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm a monk, right? And, and, and all of this stuff, I'm not Christian, like, you know, but I tell people, when people are like, ain't you Christian? Like, I thought you was Christian. Like, I'm, I'm all of the above. 
<laughs> I'm Christian, Muslim, um, I'm Hindu, or you know, they be like, man, you tripping, bro? And I was like, I, I know, I know. You know, you know, we gonna we gonna ask you that, man. <laughs> yeah, but but, but I, I, I expect you to, right? I expect you to, and and then because then people be like, he different. But then but what yeah. I realized yeah. is like, years later, they be like, mm. what is that dude that? You know, yeah. I just yeah. realized that I just I'm just like a couple of light years ahead. Yeah. And so, like, I, I'm when, when I when when my presence is felt, it's just me yeah. planting the seed, you know, yeah. letting you know, like, this is what I've been talking about. And so, like, years later, you'll right. be like, "Dude, that dude right there, who, who the <laughs> hell was he?" You know, and, and like, I, I get it, I get it. Yeah, I like, I, of, I get yeah. who I am. I get my energy. I understand that. But right. you know, and 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 um, I'm I'm just I'm just a a, a gift, yeah. right? And and so that's why I'm always in the present. So my presence is always felt. You know, because I understand that I am a gift, and mm -hmm. uh, and, and and when you do that, you, you can make an impact on people, man. And and I, I love myself so much, you know, that I love everyone else. And it's yeah. you know, it's it's just me. I'm just just <laughs> me being me, and there's nothing else that I can really explain except that. And so you know, when yeah. people learn how to accept me, man, then they start realizing like, oh, you know, like, you know, because like. We look at Michael Jordan and be like, man, I want to be like Mike, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, just because he exuded something that 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 made everybody, I want to duck like that, right, you know. So right. and, he and said the same he, way, he blazed a trail that so many people are follow to this day. What we're right. Doing. Yep. Right. Well, and so well, for look, me to be me is that same thing. So yeah. Well, look here, man. Uh, you definitely are. You definitely are uh, that dude, man. You definitely are. You, Definitely unique. I will say that, like you said, there's no, <laughs> you, you know, not not every day do I get a chance to sit down and, and chop it up with a monk, former uh, former uh, pro athlete. So I do appreciate this uh, opportunity to do so, man. And it's just been a, a very good conversation, a, a, a very good enlightening conversation. And so I do appreciate you just sharing again, piquing our curiosity, answering some questions, shedding some light, all that good stuff today. Uh, it's definitely been good. Um, and so with that being said, man, um, I, we, we going we gonna to tune out now. We're going to get up off, off the program at this moment, but enjoy the conversation. Um, to all you out there listening, if you uh, like this program, continue to share it. Let people know about us here on Behind the Grind. Uh, we're having conversations, like we said, real conversations with real people. These are real people that we're talking to and just sharing their, their stories and sharing what they been through and what they've accomplished and how they got through it and how they overcome it. And so in our conversation today, you have a prime example of an individual who 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 defied the odds and got through and overcome in many ways. And so uh, we'll continue to bring that to you here on Behind the Grind. So until the next time, I'm Sherrod and this is Behind the Grind.